Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, this is Bart from Tactical Canine Solutions. Um, what I want to discuss today is some proper line handling for tracking. Um, I'll have my assistant here, uh, Jeff, who is going to be our victim today. I will teach him um, the different uh, line handling techniques for um, cornering and for going through and under obstacles while tracking. Um, the line handling is very, very important to uh, get trained in that very well is because the line is attached to our dog's harness and is a way of communicating. So what we don't want to happen is that the line gets shocked all the time or that we pull on the line and give unintentional uh, feedback onto the dog. And that feedback often is perceived as corrections because when the, wo the, the line wobbles and it's, uh, it shocks, um, we often pull on that line a little bit too hard and will correct the dog in that matter. So uh, today what I want to do is um, go over uh, proper line handli handling techniques um, to, to improve the communication while we're on our job. Let's dive into this. So one of the first accessories that I would like to discuss is a good pair of gloves. Uh, when we're going to work with a line um, and we feed the line, the, the line will um, rub against our uh, hands and we often have, uh, have blisters, burn blisters, that is uh, very uncomfortable. So uh, when you are uh, handling a line with tracking or protection even, um, wearing a good pair of gloves is, uh, is a good idea. I like these uh, steel gloves. They are used to, um, you know, the, the lumberjacks use them. Uh, for chainsaw, they're, um, they're, the, the letter on this is, uh, is very thick and I still have a lot of um, um, feeling into the gloves. So the, the lines that I like to use um, for training in tracking, not for tracking itself, this is not my tracking line, is these heavy rubber lines. And the reason why I like to use these heavy rubber lines is they're more difficult to handle. And my philosophy is you better train here um, to perform here because if I train here, I'm going to perform here. So I like to make it a little bit more difficult for my uh, handler. And um, so using these heavy lines um, will help with that. So the first thing that I'm going to uh, teach my, um, my new handlers is good um, line handling posture. I like to have a uh, two point um, body contact and basically a three-point um, uh, leash uh, contact. The way I hold the line is like I ho hold a horse reins. I'm going to feed the line uh, on my pinky, um, let the line run over my three fingers and hold it with my thumb, and then I'll hold my, almost like you hold a weapon, uh, hold the, my hand with my other hand, and this, this way I'm very stable. Uh, what I can do, for instance, if I need to uh, feed the line to the dog, I can easily extend my, my arms, I can pull my arms in, I can raise them up, I can raise them down, and when my dog has tension on the line, um, I am not going to shock the, shock the dog. So um, correct, for me, correct um, line uh, handling, is or uh, line gripping is I'm going to feed the line into my pinky, let the line run over my three fingers, lock it with my uh, thumb, and then the line basically can be fed through my fingers like that. And if I lock it up and I put pressure with my left hand onto my, my fingers, that line will absolutely be, be secure. So um, nice triangle body contact I can absorb a lot of shocks and I can manipulate the line if I need to feed the line um, just a little bit with extending um, my arms out or bringing my uh, arms back uh, in. I am, I'm going to demonstrate feeding and um, pulling the line back so again I'm going to put the, the line between my pinky let it sit over my three fingers and grab it and with my left hand, I'm going to uh, block the hand. Um, so, so if I get a little bit of, of line, I'm, I'm going to ask my guy, my, my guy who's a dog here, to pull on the line and I'm going to feed it with the hand. So pull on the line, you see I can feed it. If I want to stop it, uh, I can put tension on it. 
So let's try this again, pull on the line. I'm gonna stop it and then um, it's, it's blocked. Again, this rubbing, um, my hands are so seasoned from uh, working a lot of lines so I don't get uh, any rope burn or uh, leash burn, uh, but that's why the gloves are for. So I'm gonna do this again. So I'm, I'm getting line and so now my dog is pulling and I'm gonna feed the line, I can do this and there you go, I'm gonna feed the line and suddenly I can pull. Um, and keep that line uh, steady. Um, if my dog just wants a little bit uh, forward, I can feed that line in. If I need to bring my dog back without tension, without pu pushing or pulling, um, shocking that line, I just bring my hands back. Now my dog finds a trail and he goes, I can feed it and I can follow him. So let's practice this. Um, let's get a couple of guys um, out here and show you how they do. Charlie has got the line and so what we're going to do is we're going to simulate feeding that line. So let's feed that line. There you go, let's stop it. There you go, very easy and smooth transition. So what, I what I'm going to ask uh, Charlie to do here is um, to uh, simulate a bouncing line. And so this is the thing that we want to prevent because this is gives a lot of bad communication. So um, let's feed the line out with a dog moving forward. So there we go, the dog's moving forward. The, Charlie's at the end of the line, he's gonna block the line and now the dog is going to go a little faster. And so with that, with that uh, good hand position, you see that the line isn't bouncing and that's very, very important because that gives clear communication to the dog. We're ready to take a corner. Charlie's uh, hands are in position. He's got a good grip on the line. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to ask our dog to souk. So we're gonna give the souk command here in a little bit. And then Charlie will feed the line out uh, very smoothly. And as Charlie is almost at the end of the line, he will lock the line while he is moving forward. So we prevent jerking. So why don't we give the souk command to the dog? See the lines smooth and there we go and perfect. So here we are, we are going forward. The dog makes a corner and then what's important is that Charlie is gonna feed out and make that corner. We have dog and handler. So what we're gonna simulate is that the dog is going to uh, get a soup command. The leash will be fed by uh, Charlie. As Charlie is almost at the end of the line, he will uh, give a little bit of slack with his hands and start moving in the corner. So. Why don't we give the soup command to the dog? Soup. There you go, Charlie is doing a good job feeding the line and is almost at the end of the line and that was a very smooth transition. You'll see the dog here making a corner and Charlie is going to take that little pause, slow down and then speed up into that corner and that corner was very smooth. So why don't we speed up there and have the dog run a little bit? And so while the dog is running, you can see how that line stays very steady. Excellent, uh, excellent line handling from these guys. Rules reversed. Um, Charlie is going to be the dog and Jeff is the handler. Jeff here is in training in the handler's course. He is going to have a, a human trafficking dog. Um, so Jeff is enrolled in my handler's course. And so here's his first attempt to make that corner. So when you guys ready, let's uh, let's start. Give your dog the soup command. Soup. So here the dog goes and you, as you can see, that was a little bit of a shock. So let's reset. And it should be, be a little bit smoother. I'm just wearing gloves. So we're going to reset and ask the dog to go again. So make sure there's not too much pressure there on the, on the line so the dog can uh, move out uh, smoothly. Uh, give your dog the sue command. Nope. A lot better uh, from Jeff here. Um, as they approach the corner, um, Charlie's making the corner and Jeff is waiting and then making that big loop, feeding it out and that went really smooth. Why does the dog, uh, why doesn't the dog speed up a little bit? And then see that transition, very, very nice. And let's make another corner guys. Let's make a right corner, very nice. Very good handling there from Jeff. 
um, beautifully done. Why don't we throw in another corner? And there's a little wobble, so um, that could have been a little smoother. And we'll do one more corner. So it's very important, guys, that you practice these line handling skills without the dog first. So we learn to communicate with a lot of clarity and a lot of smoothness. One more corner. Very nicely done. We are going to do this again, but a little bit faster. So Jeff is going to ask his dog to souk again. And um, this time we'll have a small jog and do those four corners one more time. Jeff, when you're ready, give your dog the souk command and let's go. A little wobble here uh, from the leash, so I should recommend a little bit more tighter leash. But what's important is the line is wobbling, but there's no real connect corrections uh, on on the part there from uh, Charlie. Charlie, do you feel any pulling? Uh, just tension, no no pops. Very good. The pops is what is um, to be avoided. The little wobble here with a bit of heavy leash is because of the heavy leash, but we don't want pops. We don't want the line to go into Charlie and out to Charlie. So this is looks really smooth. Jeff's doing a good job. Again, he's he's here in training to be a, a handler for tracking dogs for uh, anti-human trafficking. And these guys are doing a good job. Why don't we speed up a little bit? That's very nice there from... Uh, from Jeff, really nice how he cut that corner and the dog is doing a great job as well. We're going to use this tunnel to simulate very low brush. So what I'm going to ask my guys to do is um, to track through this tunnel. The dog is going to um, go into the tunnel and the handler is going to follow. Very similar techniques as uh, corner use. Um, the most difficult thing here is that we will um, need to follow the dog while we are hunched down or almost on our belly. So let's, uh, let's see what it's looked like uh, when these guys are going to go through. So we saw these guys go through the tunnel and so one of the techniques that was used is walking up to the line basically taking in slack so we can get a little bit more closer to the dog and it's done in such a way that the tension on this line is constant what we at all times need to prevent even go through the obstacles is that we shock the, do the dog and shock this line because that might me uh, be perceived as an aversive so one of the things that I like to do is if I have my, my line uh, in my hands like this, is I'm going to take my left hand and just feed up while I'm creeping up this line and keeping that tension into the dog. So why don't we um, have the dog in motion and uh, show you what this looks like. So the dog is going, so I'm going to creep up to the, to the line and prevent this line from being shocked. And now I can easily go down and I can go up with that line on constant tension. Yeah, so um, let's go back into the tunnel and I'm going to show you this in slow motion. I have my dog Jeff uh, there. He's already inside the tunnel, um, as you can see. So what's going to happen is Jeff is going to go through the tunnel and I'm going to demonstrate how to take up this slack um, while the dog is going through and under an obstacle. So um, I tell my doggy to sue. So my dog is going through the obstacle and I'm going to feed this line. So I'm very close um, to the tunnel. So what I can do now is when I'm here with the tunnel is I'm going to go in. So maybe the camera can go a little bit uh, closer to me here. And then what we're, what's going to happen is I'm going to go into the tunnel and then crawl through. Here we are in, inside a tunnel, so my dog is already out there, and so what you can see, I have a lot of slack here on this line. So one of the things that I'm going to do now is when my dog is moving forward, 
I'm going to feed that line out with releasing the tension while I'm crawling out of the tunnel and then when I'm out I can immediately go back and not pull any tension onto that line um, or better not correct that dog. So let's ask these guys to do this again and um, go through this obstacle one more time. Let's go guys. Sooch. Very good feeding out there. Jeff is taking that slack. I'm pretty good. And they go up. And there they go. Nice transition. Very nice. Well, well done, guys. Well done. We looked at some of the foundations of line handling uh, for tracking. Um, practicing mechanical skills without a dog is very important so we can get smooth in those techniques. So we are doing our dogs a favor by not correcting them unintentionally and give them aversives while we are training and while we are um, having them perform. So I would suggest go out there and practice these skills with a friend and get good at it. The next time we'll actually will go out to the fields um, and practice these skills in real life situations again without the dog but we'll go on a track um, through brush uh, through obstacles like we would go on a track with a dog um, to again get get comfortable in handling these line uh, handling skills in real life situations so for now uh, give me a like subscribe um, give me a thumbs up a love Leave me any comments or questions below and then I will see you in the next uh, video. Until then, thank you and bye.